Matt Bernier with the DRF Bets Race of the Day for Friday, April the 26th. Race number nine, Keeneland Race Course, Lexington, Kentucky, the grade three Bewitch. Mile and a half on the grass for Phillies and Mares. Before we dive into the field, I'd encourage you to head on over to bets.drf.com. Take a look at this promo for the loyal Race of the Day viewers. Money back, Race of the Day. Bet $7 on one horse to win in the DRF Race of the Day. Your horse finishes second or third. We'll give you your $7 back for all the details Head on over to bets.drf.com. Let's take a look at the field of Phillies and Mares that will go the 12 for a long distance here in the featured event at Keeneland on Friday. You can head on over to the Race of the Day page on drf.com. Download free formulator past performances. I will go through this field in post position order. And let's kick things off with the number one, Beach Flower. Beach Flower goes out for Mac Robertson, Johnny Velasquez, with the mount here, let's begin with the pace projector from Timeform US because they have this filly out there, or a mare, she's six years old at this point. They have her out there cutting out the fractions, and I think that's a logical and understandable position given the fact that two starts back, granted it was last October, but she finished first in the grade three Dowager at a mile and a half here at Keeneland. She was disqualified and placed third, but she does have a little bit of upward mobility. That most recent run at uh, Oakland Park that was back at the end of January that was on the main track, I, something just didn't go right that day. I would just draw a line through that effort. Uh, she's versatile. I know she's 0 for 6 lifetime on grass, but 5 times 2nd or 3rd. So at least you know that there is some ability. And again, she did cross the wire first in that run in the Dowager last October. If she gets out there and for some reason they allow her to go soft and go slow early on, perhaps she can get brave. But again, Timeform US is projecting a fast pace, so perhaps that works against the one beach flower. The number two is Sky Full of Stars, making her second start in the United States, or in North America, I should say. Her first start was up in Canada at Woodbine last October in the grade one E.P. Taylor. She is a German bred. She's predominantly been campaigned in Germany. Now she goes up for Christophe Clement. First time Lasix going on here. Julian Leperu with the mount. Uh, the 92 buyer in the 116 raw time form U.S. ratings earned in that EP Taylor while she was no match for any of the winners that day. Those are the highest last out figures in this field. Coming off of a little bit of a break, that's a little bit of a concern going a mile and a half. She's one for two at the distance in the past. You'll note that she's a group two winner in Germany, two starts back at this mile and a half distance. So the real question is, is she going to be ready to go off the bench? Uh, I think you might be able to get a decent enough price on her given some of the other connections in this race. Uh, and maybe you do end up with a horse that is a square enough price that you can take a shot with. With the Lasix going on for Clement, uh, I like a lot here. And also, keep a look at some of those names. I know you're going way back in the PPs, but a Raving Beauty's name is in there. Wuhita's name is in there. So she kept some decent enough company, whether it was in Germany or even a couple of those runs in Italy for her. Uh, Sky Full of Stars, I think, is one that you definitely want to keep an eye on. The three is Flower Party from Michael Stidham. Now, you'll note that she was bet down to 3-1 to one odds in her United States debut. That was in the New Orleans Ladies. Uh, she got loose in the post parade, so I think you want to give her the benefit of the doubt for that race. It was also her first start off of a considerable layoff. And more importantly for me, it was her first start at a distance here in the States that clearly looks like it's shorter than ideal. And to me, it feels like that was probably nothing more than a means to an end. Get a race into her. Obviously, you didn't want her to get loose and kind of run off like that, but... It felt like more of a means to an end to get her to a longer distance race. Perhaps this is the race that the connections have had in mind all along. She is a group three winner, two starts back in Italy. That was over soft going. Does seem like she enjoys some cut in the ground. I don't think she's incapable of running over firmer turf. Keep an eye on the weather for Lexington on Friday. Flower Party, certainly one that you can make a case for coming into a spot like this. The number four horse is Icky Maysho. This is a horse goes out for Roger Atfield. Uh, she is one of those interesting ones that up north of the border when she's at Woodbine, she's been running predominantly on the synthetic. And when she's down here in the United States, she's running on grass because we don't really have many synthetic tracks right now. Um, her form down at Gulfstream over the winter was quite good. You want to give her the benefit of the doubt for that first run in the La Prevoyant, coming off the bench, catching yielding turf, draw a line through that. She came back and ran two bang-up races, one in the very one, the other in the Orchid. Uh, the Orchid at the longer distance, I think that's really more of what she's cut out for. I know she's 0 for 5 at this distance, but I kind of like her at these longer distances where she can be forwardly placed, doesn't actually have to go outright to the lead, and you see in a race like this, based on the pace projector, she could be sitting a pretty advantageous position in here. Jose Ortiz takes the mount. He had the mount on her in the very one, two starts back at a mile and three sixteenths. I think Eki Maysho, the big knock against her is she's never won here in North America. 
She's finished second or third 15 times from 38 lifetime starts. And perhaps the grass isn't her best surface. Perhaps she is better on a synthetic. I still think you have to view her as a major player in here, particularly because of that tactical advantage that she has perhaps on some of the deep closers in here. She might be able to get first run beneath Jose. Let's move on to the number five horse. This is Peru. We have a positive formulator fact for Peru's trainer and Mike Maker. Over the past five years, turf, 61 to 180 day layoffs in 12 furlong races. 5 for 16 with a 201 ROI. You'll note that only six of them have hit the board. So it kind of feels like an all or nothing move here for this barn. Bigger picture, I believe, added to that in his most recent run. That was last weekend at Keeneland as well. Um, you look at it and say, this is a mare that has done some good things throughout her career. But you just go three starts back. She won the claiming crown tiara down at Gulfstream. So she, it feels like whenever she's been tested, she can't quite cut the mustard. Maybe she's a notch or two below some of the better ones. But this distance, she has run respectably at it in the past. Two runner-up finishes from two lifetime starts at it. We know the grass is what she wants. And Maker at Keeneland, say what you will about this meet. It's been a little bit cool for the Maker barn. The, the man knows a thing or two about win, training horses to, to win down at Keeneland, down in Lexington. Luis Saez has them out here. She has a number of races from a buyer standpoint and from a time form standpoint that are fast enough to win. The question is... What are we going to get here off the bench? If that formulator fact is any indication, she should be ready to go. Number six in here is Samuna. This is a horse that goes out for Jorge Abreu. Uh, unfortunately, her form here in the United States just seems to, to really leave something to be desired. And I think it's one of those things. You see horses come over from Europe time and time again. She ran over in France to start her career. But there was a long layoff between her last French race and her first race here in the United States. Now, granted, she rallied into a race with no pace in her stateside debut. That was at Keeneland last October, uh, last April, excuse me. But it just feels like from a number standpoint, maybe she hasn't gotten back to what she once was. And let's be honest, even when she was over in France, it's not like she was a world beater. She hadn't run in any kind of a group stakes race. Um, I kind of wonder, you're gone for so long, you come over here, you're running high 70, low 80 buyers. I don't think that's fast enough to get it done. Perhaps stretching out to a mile and a half is what she's wanted all along. But just based on her form, it's difficult for me to really recommend a horse like Samuna in this spot. Now, Maruba is a little bit more intriguing to me. Goes out for Cherie DeVoe. Uh, Cherie DeVoe's horses have run very well over this meet. Sure, she's only she's 0 for 4, but three of them have hit the board at this point. Joel Rosario takes them out. Uh, Julian Leperu will be on the Christophe Clement runner in this spot. She made her stateside debut here in her first start since the end of October last year where she ran in a group three over at St. Claude. Um, I, I thought it was a fine enough effort given the fact that it was off the layoff, given the fact that Time Form US said there was a little bit of a lack of pace or throughout the middle fractions there, and it was a mile and three-eighths off the bench. I'd expect her to take a big step forward here. She was no match for Ikki Meisho, but Ikki Meisho had the recency advantage and the tactical advantage. So a horse like Maruba I could certainly see coming and putting in a big bid, and there's a part of me that thinks that there's a real chance that you might be getting a, a very nice number on a filly like this. I, I think she's one of the more intriguing candidates in here because I think there's a real chance that she takes a step forward. It, it feels like there's a you kind of know what the most part for what these girls are. With a horse like Maruba, I think she at least has a, a chance to take a step forward here in her second start off the bench, second start in North America. The eight is gaining, and I think gaining could very easily be the favorite come post time in here. She goes out for Brad Cox. This is her first start in the United States. Florent Giroux has the mount. First time Lasix, last time we saw her, she won a Group 3 race at 25-1 to 1 over at Toulouse over in France. Uh, she is a Judmont homebred. I think there's a real scenario where you look at her and perhaps long term, She's the one that you're going to want coming over here. She's run well enough on ground that has some give in it, which is a little bit interesting because usually when these horses come to the States, they're coming for the firm ground. Uh, but she did win that run over soft in that most recent race. Uh, for what it's worth, she's been training, according to Marty McGee's uh, advance for this race, the Bewitch. You can find that on DRF.com, the filly or mare that she was training with. She came back and she won a stakes race, or uh, excuse me, she won an allowance race in her first start off the bench here with an 89 buyer going a flat mile. So if you want to use that and try to make some sort of a projection for what this uh, five-year-old mare is capable of doing here in this spot, do so. Uh, again, the Lasix go on for the first time. I'd expect a good, a good enough effort from her coming off the bench. And again, she probably is getting a little bit of class relief given the fact that she won a group three in France. Uh, the nine and the 10 are both homebreds for Calumet. 
The 9 is Coach Whip. The 10 is Dinah B. They both go out for Jack Sisterson. Keep an eye on Dinah B. She's cross-centered in a race on Wednesday at Keeneland. She may or may not go in this spot, depending on if she runs there. Uh, as far as Coach Whip is concerned, I think she would appreciate a little bit of pace in front of her. But having said that, she has a couple of races where she's positioned two or three lengths off of it. So maybe she can be positioned mid-pack. The problem I have is, just for, strictly from a number standpoint, she's a little bit on the light side. Uh, her sire, so you think he wanted to go longer, so perhaps stretching out to a mile and a half will be to her advantage, but as is right now, I think she's a little bit tough on paper, and if Dinah B goes in this spot, the blinkers come on, Corey Lannery has the mount, I would expect her to be mid-pack as well, even with the blinkers going on, but she's another one that just strictly from a numbers standpoint, she seems a little bit light, outside draw, not that big a deal, I think you'll be able to get over and save some ground, because the pace, I don't think, look, it, it, time form has a, has a red bar and a fast pace, I think it's all relative. I don't think it's going to be a 47 second kind of half mile kind of pace. I think it's going to be somewhere in that 49 or 50. And for the grand scheme of things, that's more on the, the reasonable side. I think she's going to be able to be in a mid-pack position uh, if she goes here. But again, she's cross-centered for a race on Wednesday at Keeneland. So let's take a look and see where I landed here in the ninth race at Keeneland on Friday, the DRF Bets race of the day. It's the grade three Bewitch. Uh, I went with the number two horse in here. I just feel like sky full of stars. She ran well enough, given there was no pace in that EP Taylor for her to run at relatively quick turnaround for a horse coming over from Europe. Uh, now she's been here for a while with Clement. She's gotten acclimated. Leperu seemingly has ridden other mares in this race. He lands here in this spot. The Lasix go on for the first time. And with a little bit more pace in here, as the pace projector seems to suggest is going to be the case, uh, I think Sky Full of Stars can come with a nice run. But this is a very salty group. Wouldn't be surprised if any number of horses in here, if you're playing any kind of a pick, I think you got to go spread deep in here. I went 2, 4, 8, and 1, but there are a number of other intriguing runners in this spot as well that I think you should be considering using. You should be considering using DRF Bets. If you're not already, head on over to bets.drf.com. Great deal. For our loyal race of the day viewers, money back for the race of the day. Bet $7 on one horse to win in the DRF Bets race of the day. If your horse finishes second or third, we'll give you your $7 back. All the details are over on bets.drf.com. Schedule a post time for the ninth race down at Keeneland on Friday afternoon, 530 Eastern. Good luck.